Cup. A glorious moment. It's on here now. Do you remember the controversy of the Jabulani soccer ball used in the 2010 FIFA World Cup in South Africa? The ball traveled strangely through the air in ways that professional players weren't used to. This stirred high drama and resulted in its eventual ban by FIFA after former Liverpool player Craig Johnston compiled feedback from fellow players. Keepers have all been complaining about the ball, but here the centre forwards have been complaining about the ball, complaining about overheading the crosses, and everybody's complaining about the ball. John Eric Goff is a professor at the University of Lynchburg who specialises in sports physics. He's an expert on soccer ball aerodynamics, and he helped us understand why the Jabalani caused so much mayhem compared to its predecessors. So what would happen with the Jabalani ball is it would be kicked at a high speed. You'd have this low drag coefficient, but then the flow would change from turbulent to laminar, and the drag coefficient would skyrocket, and all of a sudden the drag on the ball would go up, and the ball would appear to slow very quickly. And it had a beach ball effect. Drag? Turbulent? Lamina? What is Eric referring to? The drag force is the resistance caused by the motion of a body through a fluid, such as air or water. Eric mentions the drag coefficient. That's a variable used in the equation to calculate the drag force. It's a complex equation that isn't quite needed for discussion here. But what's important is that this drag force causes the ball to slow down during its flight through the air, resulting in an important change in airflow around the ball as it slows down. At high speeds, this airflow is called turbulent airflow, where air separates very far off the back of the ball, leaving a wake of air behind the ball that looks rather chaotic. But as the ball speed slowers, the airflow transitions into what we call laminar flow, where air separating off the back of the ball looks a lot smoother and less chaotic. Importantly, the drag force is larger for laminar flow than for turbulent flow. The big flaw with the Jabalani was that the speed at which turbulent flow changed to laminar flow occurred at a ball speed that's too high, such as during free kicks. The drag crisis for Jabalani occurred right in the middle of a speed where you see a lot of corner kicks and free kicks. So what would happen is the ball's moving along with this drag on the ball and all of a sudden the flow would change over the Jabalani. The flow would change from turbulent to laminar and what would happen is the drag coefficient would ratchet way up and the ball would experience an increased amount of drag at, at a given speed and all of a sudden it would appear that the ball is slowing rapidly. It would be very much like if you were to just hit a beach ball really hard and the beach ball is coming at you and then all of a sudden it just looks like it's slowing very quickly. Let's look at a traditional soccer ball. It has 20 white hexagonal panels and 12 black pentagonal panels. That mathematical pattern was seen on the Adidas Telstar, the ball that was used in the 1970 World Cup in Mexico. But for modern balls, those panels come in all sorts of different numbers, shapes, and sizes, each one affecting the ball's aerodynamic properties. In the 2006 World Cup in Germany, Advances in computer design and manufacturing methods enabled Adidas to debut the 14-panel teengiest ball. The Jabalani ball from 2010 has eight panels. These panels and their textures ultimately influence the drag crisis. That's the point at which turbulent airflow changes to lamina as a ball slows down in flight. For soccer balls, you want this drag crisis to occur at a low speed so the ball appears to be traveling normally and uniformly through the air. If it occurs at a high speed, what we see is that beach ball effect that Eric was referring to. Adding roughness to a ball usually helps reduce the speed at which the drag crisis occurs. Well, while the Jabalani had some added textures and roughness to its panels, it wasn't enough to ensure that the drag crisis occurs at a low speed. It instead occurred at a speed that was too high. According to experts that dissected the ball after FIFA 2010, the Jabalani was simply too perfect. Sure, soccer balls are round, but they're never smooth. And one of the very counterintuitive aspects of aerodynamics of a sporting ball, like a, either a baseball or a golf ball or a soccer ball, the belief that if you just polish it and smooth it, you're going to make less air drag. And that's completely untrue. Uh, there's a reason all those dimples are on a golf ball or the stitches on a baseball help it you know, fly sweet.
ideal ball is that you want that transition to happen at a much lower speed so that the majority of the game is played with a uniform drag coefficient. The unusual aerodynamic movements of the Jabalani were likely a key factor in the 60% penalty kick success rate from players who kicked the ball. Comparatively, the Team Geist ball from 2006 scored 76.47%. Adidas has since learned from their controversial ball and have implemented necessary changes to the development of Qatar 2022's ball, the Al Rila. Uh, this ball right here is the Al Rila, and it actually has 20 panels. Uh, so they've ratcheted up the number of panels, and there are eight of these little triangular uh, sections, which have some interesting little social messaging on them. Eric led a team at the University of Tsukuba in Japan to test the aerodynamics of the ball in a wind tunnel before he came to the conclusion that the ball doesn't wobble unpredictably like the Jabulani. The Alarila has a drag profile very much like soccer balls that were used in Russia and in uh, Brazil. The Brazil and Russia World Cups had a 76 and 92% penalty success rate respectively. So how will the El Rila perform? And will it affect the outcome of the 2022 FIFA World Cup?